Welcome back to Adventures in Freeze Drying. And today we are going to make a red pepper soup. It's going to use three red peppers, two tomatoes, a yellow onion, um, some garlic, and then it's supposed to be fresh parsley, but I'm not a huge parsley person. So I'm using my leftover frozen basil since I, it's winter and I don't have any fresh basil around right now. Um, but great way to get this out of my freezer. And so we'll go ahead and get started. The first step in preparing the soup is to have your peppers and seed them, have your tomatoes, quarter your onion, you're going to peel and have your garlic, and then we're just going to barely drizzle that with um, olive oil, no more than two tablespoons, and sprinkle that with a little salt and pepper, and we're going to bake that for um, 45 minutes at 375. So I'm going to go ahead and get this stuff going. Make sure you put this on parchment. It's going to make cleaning up after this has baked for 45 minutes a whole lot easier. You're not gonna have all those juices blackened and stuck to your pan. They will instead be on the parchment paper, making that way easier to clean up. So I'll show you what this looks like when I have it ready to go into the oven. I have all of my veggies halved or quartered. My peppers are seeded. I did not seed my tomatoes, and I think this will be fine because first they're going to be baked and then they're going to be boiled. So I don't think the seeds are going to cause issues once they're freeze drying. I have my garlic and my onions. Garlic was um, just peeled and halved. Onions are quartered. I'm going to just lightly drizzle a little bit of olive oil on here quick. You might also notice that I made sure to have a lip all the way around on my parchment. Again, just helping to keep the juices and everything from going underneath and then turning black and really sticking to my tray. I'm now gonna add a little bit of salt here. We're gonna add a little bit of pepper. And then this is gonna go straight in the oven at 375 for 45 minutes. I'll see you when this is coming out of the oven. There's about seven minutes left for my veggies to bake. So I'm going to go ahead and add two cups of veggie broth to a stock pot. And my, I did a quarter cup of my basil, the paprika, the Italian seasoning as well here. Or not yeah, the paprika. You can use smoked paprika, sweet paprika, regular paprika, um, whatever you want, what suits your taste buds. And we're going to go ahead and just start heating this up to help bring this to boil a little faster once my veggies go in. I've just pulled my roasted veggies out of the oven and using a tongs, I'm gonna pick them up and add them to my broth that is just starting to try to boil. You're going to want to bring all of this to a boil and then turn it down to simmer for 10 minutes once we get all of our veggies in here. This recipe does also call for some tomato paste that I certainly do not have on hand right now. You could use, if you had freeze dried tomatoes that you had powdered, you could add a little bit of that in here to add some more tomato flavor. If I really think I need the tomato sauce paste, I can maybe add a little bit of pizza sauce that I have. It won't thicken it quite like the tomato paste will, um, but it'll still give it a little bit more tomato-y flavor. So it only called for two tablespoons of tomato paste, so not a lot. Decided I could make this even though I did not have that in my pantry at this moment. Something to make sure I get added to my pantry this year. So I've almost got all of this added. These smell really good sure I get that garlic in there too. I'm going to put the lid on. Actually, I'm going to stir this well first, just really try to break this down in there. Maybe chop them up a little bit with my spoon a little bit so they're all down into that broth. I am guessing this is going to be a two or three medium tray soup if you freeze dry it all. Um, so you might want to double this if you want to put a bunch up at a time. Great recipe this summer when your garden is has all these fresh veggies in it. It would be a great thing to get put up for the winter. 
but we'll go ahead and let that come to a boil and simmer for 10 minutes. My soup just got done um, simmering for 10 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and use an immersion blender. This is my brand new one from Mueller. I believe I just have to hit a button and then I can control it on the top. So I think I'm going to turn this up all the way. I have this pureed. It's definitely the consistency of like a tomato bisque or homemade tomato soup. Um, so it's gonna be very liquidy going on to my trays. I'm definitely not going to fill my trays all of the way. To help it freeze dry, I will also be using dividers. I have learned that when you add dividers, it just gives more sections for moisture to escape than having just a flat surface. So it does freeze dry a little bit more efficiently. So let's go ahead and get this trade up and see what a full batch trade up does for us. I let the soup cool for a couple of minutes um, simply because I'm adding plastic dividers here. Um, they get a little wob wonky if you add them to hot. They go right back to straight when you wash them up. It's not a big deal. But I'm just going to go ahead. I'm putting this in in the 40 portion um, for two reasons. One, makes it a little bit easier to carry your soup um, so that way it's not spilling. And two, it just gives it more areas for moisture to escape. It makes it a little bit more efficient while it's freeze drying. And the great thing is the lids from freeze drying supplies will also snap right on here. And then I can carry these down and get them set level in my freezer. So we'll see you when this is coming out of the freeze dryer. I've given this about an extra almost 30 hours of dry time. So this only took about 24 hours, 25 hours to dry, but I only have the two trays in here. So we're going to go ahead and get this opened up and we will go do a taste test. The easiest way to pull these dividers out is to just take one of these at a time and pull them out. Otherwise, as you go to pull it out, it like comes up in a grid sometimes. So I just pull out the small pieces. It's easier to wash them this way too. I put mine right through the dishwasher like this on the, I've got a third rack in that top third rack. And I just pull those out. And then by the time you get to here, they pull out pretty easy. And then you're down to just your squares. So we're going to bag most of this up. I'm going to call 10 squares a serving. And I have a total of 80 squares, so I have eight servings here. I'm going to get most of those bagged up as single servings um, to make them easier to take with me somewhere. And then we'll do a taste test. I have a cup of boiling water sitting here that I just got out of my hot pot. I don't think I need a cup in here. I'm going to start with just half a cup of water to get that rehydrated. This was a bisque texture to begin with. So this is probably still a little bit thick, but notice how it pretty instantly rehydrated. It's a nice styrofoam texture. Everything that goes to that perfectly styrofoam texture ends up being just wonderful to rehydrate. It goes really fast. It doesn't need to sit very long. To me, that's too thick for a soup. That'd be a great sauce or something, but that's not soup for me. So I'm going to add a little more hot water and get that back to that bisque texture. Oh, this smells wonderful. Just like when I made it, it smells just like I just brought it off the stove. So again, if that was too thick for you, you could add a little bit more boiling water. Um, but I think that's exactly where I want this. So we're going to go ahead and give this a taste test. Let's go ahead and give this a try here. That is really good. Tastes just like you made it. All of these soups that are um, pureed before you eat them, they freeze dry to like this styrofoam texture and they rehydrate very quickly, fully with full flavor. Tastes like you just made them. These are always a win. In my book, you can find this recipe along with all my recipes at www.freezedryingcookbook.com. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so down below. Give me a thumbs up if you like the content, and we'll see you next time on Adventures in Freeze Drying.